Hello and welcome YouTube. My name is Misa Perfect and this is Numantian Games They Are Billions. They Are Billions is a single player zombie real time strategy experience. Set in a steampunk post apocalyptic world, your goal is to survive the throngs of infected attempting to annihilate the few remaining humans. Today we will be taking a quick look at this RTS and breaking down the in game mechanics. And this video will be broken down into the following four sections. Game selection, UI and controls, build order, and tips and tricks. They Are Billions is currently available on Steam for early access. With early access, you will be able to play through the game survival mode. A campaign mode will be available upon release in spring of 2018. With survival mode, you have three choices that will directly affect your challenge and consequently your score. Map selection, game duration, Longer games are easier as you have more time to build your defenses and the infected population. Each map will be theoretically more challenging as the score factor increases. In order to unlock the next map, you must complete the previous one acquiring a minimum score as shown here in red. UI and controls. As we load in, the first thing to understand is that spacebar pauses your game. This will be your best friend. From here, we'll go over to the command center. Everything building related is accessed through the six tabs you see here. Looking to our left, all these little green icons, we have the building defenses, income, workers, food requirements, energy requirements, and the watch range. Watch range being how far out the fog of war is from your buildings. To the right we have a list of what we currently have at our disposal. The top two are colonists and workers. These are addressed through building housing structures. Food production is addressed through the resource tab. Energy production through the energy tab. To start you have a very limited building range to use. Selecting a tent you can see that anywhere in green is available to build. Red is unavailable. To increase your building area you need to build Tesla towers. On the far right of the screen, we have your available gold. The number to the right indicates how much gold you will receive every tick. I'll get into that later. We then have your wood, stone, iron, and oil stores, all of which are used for building structures. Just like our buildings, when we select a unit, you are able to see their statistics. Health, defense, range, damage, attack speed, watch range, maintenance cost, and when you select an individual unit, you will see their experience. When that unit levels up, it becomes a veteran. Veterans receive a 20% increase to damage and 100% increase to attack speed. We also have a few commands you're able to issue with these units. Hold ground and patrol being the most useful to know. Setting with patrol route will indicate a line for that character. You're able to set patrol routes and view routes for multiple characters. You are also able to select if you want your units to attack the closest or highest level targets. Over to the Mare tab. As your colony grows in population, you will acquire mares at set points as seen below. Further, the first mare arrives between days 0 and 12, second, 12 to 29, third, 29 to 42, and fourth, anytime after day 42. When it comes to mare selection, at each occasion you will have a choice between two. Deciding what mare you will take is highly situational and is based on what resources you have closest to you and what you need the most. Build order. What you build first will depend on what you have close to your command center and resource crates you may find on the ground in your initial scouting. I personally like to begin each game by having my starting units move in each possible direction to explore. This requires some micromanaging, but it is the most time efficient. Once you find walls of zombies or defensible choke points, fall back and place your units on patrol. All it takes is for one zombie to sneak through your defenses and your game is done. Occasionally, you will find small caches scattered across the map to help you out. All resources are possible to find, and they can be a lovely boost if you find them at the start. As you can see here, we were really quite lucky with this map in terms of starting close to supply caches. Wood is required to build pylons and more advanced structures. No pylons means no expansion. Stone is required to build your soldier's center and more advanced structures. As we are close to stone, we don't need to worry about scouting for it at the moment. However, we do not have wood. Luckily, we found 30 extra wood close by as well as some gold to facilitate an early expansion. Every game will start with building the following. Three tents, 
generally you have to wait for your gold to tick after that. However, we found gold here. So then we go ahead and build another tent, a hunter or fisherman cottage, select your mare, more tents, an energy mill, expand. Everything after this is highly situational. That being said, there are some milestones to try to hit. You want to have your three starter tents built by hour five at the latest. The longer you wait for that, the less gold you're making. You do also want your additional mares as soon as possible, especially those third and fourth. If you're below the curve with these on higher difficulties, it will be harder to come back. These are essentially your gauges for production. To break down the basics of this game, you are essentially juggling the entire time. You'll be fighting to increase your cash flow while utilizing your workers to acquire more food and energy, all while dealing with space requirements and the constant bombardment from zombie hordes. Tips and tricks. I cannot stress this enough, but you need to pause often. Pausing and micromanaging will keep you alive. You are also going to want to utilize your natural choke points. When you find a small opening like we have just to the north of the command center, use it to your advantage. Less zombies piling against your walls keeps your walls up a lot longer and keeps you alive longer. When it comes to scouting in multiple directions, after you've fallen back to the base and you have your units on patrol, send one ranger out and find as many supply caches as possible. One ranger, if micromanaged, can run circles around groups of zombies and scout a substantial portion of the map. Don't go too far out though, or you will encounter faster and more deadly zombies. When it comes to expansion, do not turtle. Expand aggressively. Space gets restricted really quickly in this game, and you always need to be pushing out, growing your resources, and colony. The best time to expand is right after an invasion. Terrain plays a very important role in what you build and where you build it. You want to utilize your barren swaths of land for the majority of your building. Leave the green pieces if you can for farms when you unlock them. Trees are for sawmills and hunters cottages, water for your fishermen huts. Stones, as you see directly to the south of the command center, are for mining. Black pieces on the ground indicate iron. Gold can also be found on the ground to mine as well. To procure these resources, you set up a quarry. Oil patches are small circular pits that bubble. The little hard caps to the right of gold, wood, stone, iron, and oil are able to be increased through the creation of a warehouse. A colony. A colony who... Once you have a unit or multiple units selected, holding down the Alt key and pressing the numbers 1 through 8 will allow you to group and hotkey military units or structures. Double clicking a specific military unit will select all of those units within camera range. So if you want to, you can zoom out your camera, double click on one unit to select all of them. Double clicking a building will select all of those buildings regardless of them being in view or not. Your housing units, they can be built in rows of two. Building more than that, you'll have to have a space in between. So build smart. You are also going to want to try to leave space in between your housing projects so that you can have a bank and a market in the middle. Building walls. When you build your walls, start with a single layer to start. You can always reinforce the side when you know what direction an invasion is coming from. Walls go up quick. Now, not all maps are the same. Some will be inherently better than others in terms of your natural choke points, the resources close to your command center, and the resource drops on the ground. With resource generation, if you watch the command center, momentarily you'll see an indicator stating that we've had gold come in, or gold tick. All resource generating structures do this. To see how close you are to a tick, simply hover your mouse over a resource generating structure and you'll see a little bar filling from left to right. And that's all ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining me today for this quick look and basic tutorial of Numantian games They Are Billions. My name again is Misa Perfect. I've had an absolute blast playing through the survival mode and I highly recommend you head over to Steam and download this title. Look for a review, advanced tips and tricks, and gameplay videos when They Are Billions is released in the spring of 2018. If you found this video useful, please go ahead and hit like and subscribe to show your support.